health is wealth that is the need of the hour and today I'm going to talk about a person who really believes in it who believes that health should be affordable and easily accessible and that's why we call him as the face of Bangalore he is none other than the director of Jayadeva Institute Mr. C. N. Manjunath hello sir thank you very much for your precious time thank you uh, it's really been an honor for you to be with us you have inspired a lot of people a uh, completely a uh, young generation of doctors also can you please let me know who is your motivation whom did you get that motivation from yeah actually uh, after doing my mbbs from mysore medical college then md from bangalore medical college uh, then i did my dm cardiology from uh, manipal Uh, that is i uh, completed that uh, cardiology post graduation degree way back in 1988 since then i joined this jaydeva institute of uh, cardiology earlier okay uh, it was called jaydeva institute of cardiology now uh, after it took over as a director i changed the nomenclature of the institution from jaydeva institute of cardiology to jaydeva institute of cardiovascular sciences and research so it was a long journey from uh, undergraduate to post graduate to super uh, post graduation and all mm-hmm. so during all this period i have seen uh, lots of sufferings of the people uh, number one for the want of money second for the want of uh, facilities mm-hmm. third one for the want of uh, i mean super speciality institution right. so for me the real motivation is the uh, needy people of the state and needy people of the country they are okay. the real motivation That's fantastic yeah. yeah so that made me to really let me build up a public institution mm-hmm. which can provide a quality and an affordable uh, cardiac care right. to all cross section of the society right. so right. that is my driving force behind me and also what all the inconveniences i have seen during this long journey of nearly 12 years of my uh, medical schooling mm-hmm. uh, i uh, thought uh, probably what are all the inconveniences uh, faced by the patient faced by the doctors mm-hmm. i thought i should uh, address these issues right. so that is the f- uh, main mm-hmm. uh, objective behind my Uh, bringing some revolutionary changes today in a public uh, art institution so that's really fantastic because see you come from a very small uh, village in asan now how difficult was it for you to you know come from there and get adjusted to a city like bangalore you know and build such a big uh, you know institution which is serving i'm sure that every day at least 10 to 20000 people are getting uh, serviced and also the kind of expectation that you have from a government organization and the way jaydeva has been instrumental in setting up a right platform for the other hospitals to show how a service can be made even from the government organization so how difficult was it that transition from a village to uh, a city like bangalore yeah see of course i did uh, my schooling up to 7th standard in my village right that is uh, called cholenahalli in uh, chennai patna taluka fasan district right. then for my high schooling i moved to bangalore mm-hmm. so always in the first few months there is always some fear and phobia of uh, getting into a bigger city like this in yes. schooling but uh, within 3 to 6 months i could able to adjust to the this thing my th- of course my father uh, at that time uh, yeah of course he studied up to ls i think uh, yeah. that is one of the uh, not many people were educated to that level that although level, it yes. is a small uh, achievement yes so always uh, even i was studying in my village uh, my father always uh, used to encourage uh, my reading because uh, we are basically from an agriculture family sure, we had a lot sure. of lands and also we had a rice mill at that time right uh, but my focus was still on studies and uh, even uh, he also encouraged me to read one kannada newspaper daily okay. at that time okay so i was uh, of course it is all in kannada medium right we studied all in kannada medium but uh, i started learning english by listening to cricket commentary yes i was actually coming to that yeah cricket commentary even the uh, even today i am extremely uh, attached uh, right. to cricket right uh, that is one actually my next question was 
what made you to think that you will become a doctor because your passion was in cricket is what I've heard. So what really made that? Uh, no, actually what was happening, I used to see in villages, a uh, lot of people used to uh, go on a bullock cart to hospitals. hospitals yes. And they always, I used to see right in front of me, a lot of people were dying for the want of uh, a medical service or medical facilities and uh, when, and they, sometimes they go to a particular hospital then they used to say uh, there is there was no doctor yes, or something yes, like that yes. and another thing uh, what happened once i myself was suffering from very high fever okay so then uh, i maybe in sixth standard at that time so my father <coughs> actually took me to an hospital in uh, chandrayapatna mm -hmm. the doctor was not there okay then somebody uh, has told him that there is a doctor available in uh, Udaipura, which is another seven kilometers from Chandrapur. Right. He virtually carried me on his uh, shoulder. Oh, okay. So then I got some treatment and I became okay. Mm -hmm. So it was always lurking in my mind that uh, I should become my doctor and serve the rural poor. Right, right. So that was one of the things. And another thing, uh, why I became a cardiologist, uh, because there were not many cardiac hospital at that time. Yes. Uh, I think many cardiac patients affordable, only those who were affordable, they were either going to Mumbai mm -hmm. or they were going to Chennai right. for treatment. That is a very hand-picked few number. Majority did not have any access for uh, cardiac uh, procedures or uh, high-tech cardiac treatment. True. And uh, once what happened when I was studying uh, first year MD, uh, my mother had a chest pain. Okay. So then uh, I was uh, trying to show her to one of the professors in Mysore Medical College. I waited for nearly four hours. I think she was not properly attended and ECG also not available at that time. Right. It is a, in, in today, ECG is taken, uh, can For be everything. taken not okay. necessarily by a doctor, not right. necessarily by a, any trained person. Even a, a non-technical person can take ECG. Absolutely. Today it's all, uh, I mean, uh, computerized ECGs are available. So uh, that was in my mind, at least uh, we should have a very big cardiac uh, facility for our state as well as for the rest of the country. So that was my dream. And most important was uh, when I was uh, studying in Bangalore in high school, mm -hmm. uh, maybe in the first uh, uh, three months, six months, I, I was uh, trying to adjust. In fact, uh, it was uh, almost 70 uh, students were there in that high school right. in, in our uh, uh, group, right, in, right. in our uh, section. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, first three months, yes, they conducted a test. I was coming 30th place or 40th place. Okay. The second half uh, of the year, I almost moved to the first place. Right, right, yeah. right. So it is basically, uh, I had a strong belief and a strong faith that definitely um, I can uh, progress forward. Right. And uh, one of the thing is, I have never, never thought uh, this inferiority syndrome. Right, because right. Uh, I, I always used to think somebody by the side of me could be as intelligent as me or it could be as bad as me. Right. So I never thought somebody besides me or in front of me is, uh, knows more than me. True. I thought right. uh, I know as equally as others. I think these are the kind of values which has made you. Yeah. you know, the kind of understanding that you have got for, from your upbringing, Correct. the sorrows, the, the pain that you have seen of the farmers. So all this has really uh, motivated you to become like this. Even when I was in my village, I used to go to uh, the Sandys okay. uh, once a week. So when we are going in a group, mm -hmm. we used to go in a bus. Suppose okay. if uh, eight, ten people board the bus along with me, okay. I used to take tickets for all of them. Okay. I used to buy tickets for all of them. Okay. My father used to tell, uh, you take ticket for yourself, why do you take for others and all. Uh, okay. So. I had that generosity right from that uh, true, beginning true, and true. kindness right from the beginning. Right. And I also know that uh, you are a very big fan of Dr. Rajkumar yeah. and you still love his movies. So is there any movie that really inspired you? Yeah, actually when I was uh, studying MBBS, mm -hmm. uh, even in PUC, I used to see a lot of uh, Kannada movies. Right. 
and uh, any kannada movie that is released i has to have to see day on day one itself okay <laughs> but uh, of course uh, those for the times where uh, movies used to really uh, mould people the people yes. uh, something like uh, yeah, bangara yeah. the manusha yeah bangara yes. the manusha or even satya harishchandra kasturi yes. nivasa yes. Yes. so but one thing whenever i used to see movies of course as an mbbs student i used to see a lot of movies <laughs> then uh, when i joined md then dm cardiology uh, i stopped me because there was no time right but uh, whenever i used to see movie my preference was for second show mm mm-hmm. and uh, after coming back to the hostel i used to read from almost early morning 1 uh, o'clock up to 5 o'clock in the morning okay so many never used to believe that you are seeing so many movies but, but still, still you are <laughs> extremely good in your uh, yeah. examination Topping scoring books. more marks and all they right, used to this right, thing right. Uh, but one thing whenever i was reading uh I, even when i am traveling or whenever i am walking to the college uh, i used to uh, actually recall what all i have done okay what all i have read right right and right. Uh, even in the mid of the sleep suppose if i get up i used to uh, i mean uh, memorize what all i have done if i am missing some lines right even if i am missing some lines i used to switch on the light and used to open the book and see okay yeah and uh, as an md student mm-hmm. i used to teach undergraduate students okay so at that time there was no powerpoint presentation there was no none of these gad gates correct so i used to take theory classes for an mbbs student uh, as an md student almost for 45 minutes to 1 hour i used to give a lecture without looking into any piece of paper wow yeah. okay so that has made me a good teacher a good orator and also i am extremely fascinated about my profession that is right, my right. subject and also i like teaching the post graduates and uh, that is where probably our role is important one is uh, educating the next generation in the field of cardiology and second one is providing these cardiac care or the treatment f- services to the patient both i am balancing nicely right. although today i am a director Uh, but still i spend 60% of my time on consultation treating patients doing procedures um, again teaching uh, post graduates so i think that gives lot of satisfaction right. but at the same time when it comes to administration i take very quick decisions true very true. Uh, consensus decision and uh, i think running such a big organization yeah, requires that i don't that. believe in a yeah. uh, uh, next day Right. I right. think today is the best day. Let me finish up all the administrative things, and uh, that's how I mix up both administration as well as profession, right, right. and ultimately the end result is satisfaction for everybody Absolutely. around. Absolutely. And uh, do you remember your first operation that you did? I'm sure you've done thousands of it, but you know, always that first one. I'm sure there is some. Uh, memories yeah. of that yeah yeah see one of the uh, first uh, operation i did uh, was an angioplasty okay on one of the senior ks officer okay so when i was doing that uh, procedure of course even before we could start that patient had a cardiac arrest oh okay so when somebody because as doctors whether we worship at home or not before mm-hmm. doing a procedure we worship ourselves for the uh, we pray for the uh, recovery of the patients right so that many do not understand true so he had a cardiac arrest then for nearly 30 minutes there was no pulse there was no blood pressure then we were doing a cardiac massage i was also equally disturbed i was depressed okay. uh, what is happening to this uh, patient very unfortunate then after uh, 40 minutes of our uh, continuous cardiac massage and doing resuscitative measure is heart beat started uh, uh, coming back at that time we did an angiogram blood pressure for the patient was just around 60 mm uh, then lot of people advised me i think he will not survive he will not do anything then i told i think some rhythm has come back mm-hmm. some blood pressure uh, started picking up let me go ahead and do an angioplasty okay 
so then we did an angioplasty that means there was no heartbeat uh, of his own for nearly 45 minutes. 45 minutes we did an angioplasty instanting procedure even today th this was done about uh, uh, 18 years back okay even today he is alive uh, oh, and, uh, fantastic. with good memory good heart function good brain function great and he became an ias officer also <laughs> later then he got retired great so these you are want to tell the name of the person <laughs> oh, no <laughs> okay <laughs> all yeah. right no problem yeah. okay now after that you've done thousands of uh, yeah. you know procedures and there are certain procedures which is named after you can you just tell me about that yeah one is this balloon mitral valvuloplasty mm -hmm. because today what has happened because of explosion of technology and the various advances has taken place 50% of the cardiac procedures which were requiring heart surgery earlier mm -hmm. open heart surgery can be treated by non surgical methods okay. by way of either angioplasty or valvuloplasty where no incision is put no open heart surgery is required so these procedures uh, have been uh, some of the procedures particularly while doing a complex uh, balloon mitral valvuloplasty mm -hmm. procedure we have modified a technique of doing this valvuloplasty procedure which is uh, published in american journal called manjana's technique okay uh, heart has four chambers so the left atrium is one of the chamber okay uh, in valvular heart disease the clot formation can take place in this uh, okay. cardiac chamber uh, so this left atrial thrombus classification mm -hmm. uh, has been published and it is called uh, manjunath's classification okay and also i share this pleasant uh, piece of information mm -hmm. recently uh, 19th edition of harrison's textbook of internal medicine has right. been published that is the bible for of, all for the students, medical yes. students so in this 19th edition of uh, harrison's uh, uh, internal medicine book this uh, manjunath classification has been quoted wow that's fantastic yeah. congratulations yeah. on that thank you congratulations thank you. uh end of the day you know that's why we call him as the face of bangalore because he's every time you know is making us proud to feel that you know we have somebody like him living with us in bangalore so jaydeva as an institution uh, it has completely transformed the lives of people in terms of how a government hospital was treated right now can you please tell me how it was when you joined and like what really happened how this transformation happened Actually, I joined Jaydev Institute of Cardiovascular Sciences uh, in 1988 okay. as a so faculty. Long back, yeah. Faculty, but then I became director of this institute in 2006. Okay. So when I took over uh, as a director of this institution, this mm -hmm. was in a bad shape, to be okay. frank. Uh, out of seven floors, four floors were not occupied. okay hardly 200 to 50 patients used to come for out patients and only one or two heart surgeries were being done and uh, even lifts were not properly working there was syringes were given as a prescription so a lot of my well wishers at that point of time advised me my dr manjunath you are a good cardiologist good academician why do you take the responsibility of this directorship uh, in a sick hospital right. hospital itself is sick right so then uh, i thought let me take this as a challenge, challenge. because uh, always challenge makes things more exciting absolutely so since then uh, in the last 10 years uh, as a journey uh, of my directorship today uh, we have recorded 400% growth wow academically professionally even great. service wise great, great so great. our uh, bed strength has increased from 300 to 650 in this bangalore hospital alone okay and uh, we also we have taken this uh, jaydeva institute of uh, cardiovascular sciences uh, branches to mysore okay we started mysore branch in uh, 2010 then to address the uh, cardiac problems of uh, hyderabad karnataka region just one and one year ago we started 100 bed jaydeva hospital at kalburgi mm -hmm. then also to uh, provide this uh, quality care to the employees the labor class 
we about five years back we opened Jaydeva branch in ESA Hospital Rajajanagar. Okay. So under Jaydeva umbrella today, mm -hmm. we have 1,150 cardiac beds. Wow. Uh, this makes Jaydeva today as one of the largest heart care destination in Southeast Asia. Fantastic. It is just it is not just the number. Right. We are also providing a quality, quality service. services. Yes. So because there are many institutions where there is quality but there is no much subsidy or charity. Right, right, right. There are some institutions where there is charity but there is no quality. quality yes. So here we have a very good mix of both quality, charity and yes. subsidy. Right. And we are also running country's biggest postgraduate courses in cardiology with an annual intake of 21 seats in DM cardiology. Mm -hmm. So as a result, we are producing more cardiologists for the state and also for the rest of the country. Right. And because always people perception and may be true also to some extent, mm -hmm. government hospital is meant only for poor people, is meant only for less affordable or non-affordable. Right, right. But today, to Jaydeva, even elite class comes by choice, yes. not by chance. Correct, correct. So we are treating both rich as well as poor and financially constrained people. Right. And by treating elite class uh, in special wards, in deluxe wards, we have all those facilities. It is acting, working like a cross subsidy to the poor people. Poor people, yes. So today, uh, about 65% uh, of our expenses are uh, borne by the uh, state government right. and 35 percent we are generating. Fantastic. Fantastic. So it is also a good financial model right. of a, an autonomous institute right. where uh, we are reducing the burden on the government exchequer. Right. We are generating some revenue for uh, ourselves. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, uh, a common man gets a five-star world-class treatment. treatment yes. So our slogan is Nobody should go untreated for the sake of money. Right. And quality care is not diluted whether he pays less or he doesn't pay anything. Right. So that, uh, I mean, concept uh, has been strictly followed in this institution. And uh, anybody coming to emergency mm -hmm. for a casualty with an emergency, uh, we have strictly followed and truly practicing what is called treatment first payment next concept. Right. Uh, so any patient with an emergency, cardiac emergency coming to a casualty or to our ICU, whether he has money, no money, whether he has documents, no documents, he shall be admitted and treatment will be initiated. Uh, then we start looking at this thing because this is extremely important, particularly uh, in a heart institute because even one minute can make a yes. huge difference between true, true, true. being alive and not being no alive. more. Yes, yes, so yes, that yes. is very, very important. True. And uh, our institution has been visited by uh, various international agencies, particularly mm -hmm. Leadership School of Singapore okay. and uh, Yale Institute of uh, Management, United States, okay. London School of Economics, okay. Indian Institute of Management, right. even All India Institute of Medical Science. They have visited and studied our cost-effective model. They have asked right. me, Manjanath, how it is possible to run a government institution to the level of a five-star private corporate hospital Absolutely. at Absolutely. this low cost. Yes, yes. And another one of the burning problems of uh, public institution today uh, is uh, lack of attitude. And right. uh, that is, so that is one of the biggest challenge because we have almost close to uh, 2,000 employees. 2, employees yes. So to motivate them, to inspire them and to change their attitude uh, because many are, uh, because those lower level workers mm -hmm. are basically little rude in their behavior. So true, true, true. we have taken classes, motivated them and their attitude has changed. And today many people who are visiting this hospital doesn't believe that this is a government or organization. True. Because Absolutely, yes. few people ask me who is the owner of the hospital <laughs> because it doesn't look like a government institution. <laughs> So I think so they uh, think you are the owner of the yeah, hospital. Yeah, <laughs> I've been yes. telling them owner of the hospital is government, and I am the uh, director. True. So our faculty also is highly receptive, yeah. and we have installed a very good uh, help desk, 
and uh, the public relation uh, system is strengthened Fantastic. because whenever a patient comes to the hospital he should be received and your reception is good to the patients coming to the hospital right that improves their that uh, infuses self confidence mm -hmm. and uh, the trust is also uh, is better with the patients about this hospital right right, right. trust scale right so i have also heard that you know of course there are different hospitals uh, who do the same job there are a lot of private hospitals there you know they are not been able to give the treatment and they come here and you treat them and take 1 rupee and they save the particular child this is the story that i've heard what exactly motivates you to do that because some hospital has already said that you know we can't help and then you take them here you take the care and you save that particular life so how exactly this magic works see actually of course this is a very big hospital or any big hospital mm -hmm. uh, hundreds and thousands of patients come right and uh, some are treatable uh, cardiac problems some are untreatable right so if it is treatable mm -hmm. suppose by doing an intervention mm -hmm. or by doing an operation if there is a high chance of survival mm -hmm. i think uh, that is where you should put all your efforts right. so decision making is very important very particularly yeah particularly suppose uh, by doing all i mean investigations if you come if to if you come to a conclusion that whatever you do patient doesn't survive then we have to talk to the family relatives look even by spending lakhs and lakhs is not going to make it i right. think uh, we should call off this treatment right otherwise what happens fina finally the bill swells up yes. the one who is dead is also dead those who survive are financially dead yes but uh, suppose if we feel that he is going to survive by doing some procedure mm -hmm. uh, i think we should make put all efforts in place to save that uh, patient where so it's treatable because my question is because for that family mm -hmm. that life that soul is extremely important absolutely because yes. he is he may, he's head of the family or she may she may be the yes. uh, head of the family so because of course when you look at uh, hundreds and thousands of patients uh, for us it may not uh, matter much right. for, for that, that family, family that is 100% uh, important. essential important yes so yes. with that concept it should work because right. uh, if the, uh, because he is the breadwinner of the family if right. that person doesn't uh, survive then entire family ship collapses so right. with that concept always you should differentiate whether it is a a treatable uh, component is there or untreatable if it is definitely uh, with good treatment is likely to survive you should put in all efforts in place right now my question was why doesn't it happen in other hospitals and how it happens here that was my question in government institutions no any any hospital for that matter because i don't want to take the names of the hospital because i've done some case studies where you know they've come from a big hospital and they've told that you know we can't help it and they somehow come here and there are a lot of survivors here so that way i'm asking and how how does it matter you know is it that dedication or what is it like what is that magic which is working here see number one you should have a an humanitarian approach right and kindness is also important absolutely see kindness makes the person most beautiful however one might look like true, true. so another thing is again decision making is important right see just because so many today there are plenty of procedures are available and uh, plenty of options are available so one should understand the financial background of the patient right and within that financial framework you evolve a strategy how best you can provide a quality treatment with the, within that mm, framework, framework of financial affordability yes. Yes. and uh, just because uh, so many investigations are available no point in subjecting the patient to all types of investigation right. this is where your concept should be or your practice pattern should be talk touch and treatment okay because we need to talk to patients we need to listen you have to give some time to the patients and their attenders to explain their symptoms right many a time by listening to patient symptoms we can come Find to a, a, a yes. reasonable diagnosis in about 50 to 60% of the true uh, cases so this is where uh, and also uh, when you interact with a patient listen to them uh, psychologically their morale will be high 
right that also have a healing effect absolutely yeah. absolutely but uh, we have to make sure that they understand because even patients uh, and their attenders understanding is also important right. suppose a patient is very sick mm-hmm. uh, despite doing lot of uh, i mean good treatment Uh, giving our best if patient doesn't survive because of the seriousness of the illness the doctors community should not be blamed unfortunately uh, in the last few years it has become a trend uh, to blame a doctor or an hospital for everything and anything happening on the patient right, right, right. Uh, so this is where uh, understanding of every sector is re- important right. whether it is patients families whether it is media or whether it is Uh, politicians or the system right so our job is to provide a quality care in a timely way to a particular patient sure. despite our sincere efforts if patient doesn't survive system should not be blamed that is why right. if there is a negligence mm-hmm. yes they have a right to take this matter to an appropriate authority but they should not resort to assault or destroying the hospital property which will uh, demoralize the medical profession right but uh, hospitals come from a service industry now most of the cases you know it has become like a business so what do you have to say to them i mean is there anything that might just change their way of thinking uh you know that way also i'm sure that you will be able to Correct. you know bring some changes yeah definitely see uh, this healthcare uh, sector is basically a service sector yes i fully uh, i mean uh, agree uh, it is getting into a commercial mode right so this is where possibly hospital sector uh, should also even the private sector should reasonably uh, subsidize their uh, charges and they should not fix targets yes. see one of the biggest problem in a private hospital is it is run by uh, few business people they Corporates. have a chain of hospitals yes. suppose if an hospital is run by a group of doctors then mm-hmm. they understand this thing so i strongly feel the hospitals uh, even the private hospital should run by a cohort of uh, doctors or by a group of doctors than by Uh, business uh, people Absolutely. and yes. then what happens uh, even doctors are also helpless those who are working in the private right. hospitals they are helpless in a way they fix targets for each uh, department you have to do so many procedures as a result uh, they end up overdoing the procedure Absolutely. and they lose yes. the trust of the uh, community right 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 so and the next question for me is uh, why do you think in india a lot of heart diseases compared to the other parts of the world yeah that's true see india today is uh, under the bracket of low and middle income country right earlier we used to call it as developing nation and now they have bracketed under low and middle income countries see uh, 50% of deaths in india mm-hmm. is due to non communicable diseases right or what you can call it as lifestyle uh, related diseases so cardiovascular disease high blood pressure stroke diabetes and even cancer so these five non communicable diseases accounts for 50% of the deaths okay but 25% of deaths in india alone is due to cardiac disease okay so in india this heart attack related diseases occurs at least 10 to 15 years in a younger population than what is happening in america or europe right. so on one hand the cardiac disease is increasing mm-hmm. on the other end it is affecting uh, more in the middle age group between 25 to 45 years age group right 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 so right. the young indians or middle aged indians are becoming vulnerable to this heart attack so why do you disease. think that is see uh, there are we have two types of uh, two groups of risk factors mm-hmm. one is non modifiable second is modifiable right non modifiable is age and family history right see about uh, we have done a study of nearly 10000 patients uh, mm-hmm. who were admitted for heart attack nearly 12% had a strong family history of heart attack okay so if somebody in the family dies of heart attack before the age of 50 mm-hmm. those family members carry a higher risk for oh, heart attack that okay. is one 
then among the uh, modifiable risk factor smoking is still number 1 mm -hmm. diabetes okay today one in every five person in india is suffering from diabetes right so diabetes among the diabetics the heart attack related disease is five times more common one is smoking second is uh, increasing prevalence of diabetes third is high blood pressure right physical inactivity absolutely i think yes. this is one of the real emerging uh, risk factors right. uh, because uh, according to one study nearly 52% of indians mm -hmm. are physically inactive okay. either it could be because of the lifestyle changes or it could be various free schemes being introduced that have made them lazy that could be one of the reason absolutely and uh, food products have changed food habits have changed right and uh, people uh, eat lot of these uh, fried foods and uh, i mean oil rich foods these are some of the uh, right. reasons and other is uh, physical in a, apart from physical and obesity obesity is also yeah one obesity is one of the uh, risk factor right. and another important emerging factor particularly among the uh, working group is stress stress both physical yes. stress as well as mental, mental stress. stress and this is one of the important reason because lot of youngsters in the age group of say 30 to 45 are succumbing due to uh, i mean succumbing to heart attack right. because they are uh, getting exposed to undue stress because trying to achieve too many things in a short time is uh, putting lot of stress on them correct recently Another uh, important risk factor that has been talked about uh, for a higher uh, prevalence of heart disease is air pollution. Okay. Because among the most polluted cities, mm -hmm. Bangalore is one among them. All right. Okay. So in India, there are five uh, highly polluted air cities. So because, see, everybody thinks, uh, I mean, more often air pollution is uh, going to cause respiratory diseases. Right. Paradoxically, mm -hmm. air pollution causes more heart disease okay. than your respiratory diseases. Right. Because the pollutants or particulate matters in the air, such as nitric oxide, hydrogen sulfide, ozone, hydrocarbons, mm -hmm. when they inhale, it bypasses the lung, gets into circulation, and starts depositing in the arteries causing clotting the narrowing of the arteries so air pollution whether it is an acute or a chronic air pollution is one of the important risk factors for higher incidence of so, cardiovascular disease apart from the growing stress and physical inactivity right. and bad food habits and bad food products so this is why so uh, Indians are becoming you're saying, more vulnerable. Uh, Bangaloreans are at risk in terms of pollution. Yeah, not only Bangaloreans, any metro cities because uh, mm -hmm. vehicle pollution is one of the biggest right. thing. So these are some of the things. And you didn't mention about uh, the alcohol consumption. Yeah. You, you just mentioned about smoking because some people will think that you know, oh, doctor didn't say about alcohol, so we can drink. Yeah. So that should not no, be no, the alcohol case. Alcohol in excess is bad for the Absolutely. heart. Definitely, yes. it increases uh, blood pressure. It increases uh, heart attack events. Um, but alcohol in a small dose, yes, it doesn't have a bad effect on the heart. Okay. But as doctors, we never give alcohol as a prescription okay. because. Uh, Suppose if we say alcohol can be taken, I think the public or the patients, they always say, oh, doctor has oh, said doctor alcohol, has said. alcohol <laughs> can be taken. But they always Overdo forget, it. they always forget what the doctor has mentioned about the dose. dose. They forget yes. about the dose doctor has mentioned. They only remember that alcohol can be taken. Right. So right. definitely alcohol in high doses is harmful to the heart. Right. There is no doubt about it. Right. Yeah. And cholesterol. Yes. See, there is some misconception about cholesterol. Mm -hmm. People uh, always believe cholesterol is more in people who are obese, uh, who are overweight. No. There is no correlation between your body weight and, and the blood cholesterol. Yes. Some people may be lean, some people may be underweight, their cholesterol can be high. high. So today, nearly 70% of cholesterol is synthesized in your own body. Okay. Many people ask me, Dr. Manjanath, I am not taking any fried foods, not eating any oil foods, I am uh, totally a vegetarian. How my cholesterol could be high? Okay. The answer is, yes, this uh, particularly, the Indians are producing more cholesterol in their own body. That is the reason mm -hmm. 
I think uh, today, because of higher prevalence of cardiovascular disease, men above 35, mm -hmm. women above 45 years should undergo annual medical checkup Check for blood sugar, blood cholesterol. Right. Very, very important. See, we always celebrate uh, anniversaries, marriage <laughs> anniversaries, birthday. Right and birthdays like that you should have a medical checkup anniversary very true very uh, true <laughs> yeah suppose and treadmill test to be done you mm -hmm. know because that one treadmill ecg mm -hmm. where uh, we make people patients run on an ec a treadmill machine and record ecg that indirectly predicts whether a particular person is at the risk of heart attack okay i'm not telling it should be done every year suppose uh, after the age of i mean particularly high risk group mm -hmm. diabetics those who have got a family history of heart attack and those who have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, those under uh, working under high levels of uh, stress, yes, they have to undergo this tread medical treadmill test. Uh, if it is coming negative, then you can do it once in two years or once in two and a half years just mm -hmm. to monitor uh, right. your right. own health. So again, you know, it's, it's very difficult for people to like kind of do all this, but they will end up doing all the other activities that has res uh, less relevance in life. Now, your suggestion for people who actually go online on internet and they try to you know self-treat themselves. <laughs> so, what do you suggest to them? Because everybody is a doctor now. You know, whatever you say, you know, they'll just Google and they might even ask you questions like you know in Google it says this. You know, why are you doing this? So, what do you have to say for such people? See, Google cannot give all answers. Right. There may be correct uh, answers, there may be plenty of wrong things also there. Many times you put up Google uh, for your GPS, uh, you may not reach the exact place exactly like that. <laughs> that is also true. So, particularly you should not go for self-medication right. and uh, literature about a particular disease, there are various uh, opinions by various authors. Right. So, always you should uh, consult a specialist in uh, every specialty. And online, a particular drug, many times we come across in our practice, uh, doctor, uh, so many, uh, I mean, side effects have been re written about a particular drug. Right. Should we take this medicine or not? Or not, yes. See, how we choose a particular medicine or a particular uh, treatment strategy is, if beneficial effects are more than the adverse effects, then it is considered as a good medicine or a good treatment or a good procedure. Right. So, for every procedure, uh, I mean every drug has some side effects, maybe 2%, 3%. But 97%, if its effect is beneficial, then it is considered as a best drug. Right, right. So, always, uh, I mean, going through the internet and scanning or browsing hundreds of pages, it gets into more problems. Right, right. Fantastic, sir. You've given a lot of information okay. for us. And I want to know what is the future plans like? Yeah. How, how do you want this to be yeah. going forward? See, now, yes, we have established uh, this institution as a brand in the field of uh, cardiac sciences mm -hmm. and cardiac treatment. We need to sustain. Right. See, with a lot of efforts, we could able to reach this level of competence, Absolutely. this level of uh, excellence. But to sustain this excellence, I think a lot of hard work is required, a lot of motivation. And today, under Jaydeva Umbrella, we have 60 full-time cardiologists. No institution yeah. in this nation has 60 full-time cardiologists yes. under one roof. And also to prevent brain drain and also to motivate, I have introduced an incentive scheme mm -hmm. for my employees based okay. on performance, punctuality and productivity. And also to achieve high level of patient satisfaction index. We have introduced a feedback system. Mm -hmm. We collect feedback from the patients and try to live up to their reputation. But definitely one of the uh, real challenges is hospital is getting overcrowded. Yes. With uh, patients are flooding the hospital. Um, daily 1,500 outpatients and 600, 650 inpatient. But patients should also, should have some patients. Doctors should also have patients. <laughs> patients, attenders should also have patients. And they should understand and they should always uh, give way for treating the sick patients on priority first right. and they should come to the hospital as far as possible on appointments rather right. than coming on all days and yes. uh, finding out uh, no I, we are not treated that they should understand and uh, many cardiac diseases 
uh, today can be treated but some of them are whatever you do you can't treat that they should understand yes and uh, we are upgrading we are expanding uh, our jaydeva hospital at mysore mm -hmm. because right now we are working from a medical college uh, premises we are building a 350 bedded jaydeva hospital at the cost of 150 crores mm -hmm. and most likely it will be uh, inaugurated by year end okay so then it becomes uh, one of the second largest art institute in the state true, in mysore and to address this problem in the hyderabad karnataka region i have already said we have mm -hmm. established jaydeva hospital at kalburgi which is right. functioning very well right and uh, shortly here itself we are going to have one cardiac rehabilitation center because okay. medicine and procedures alone will not cure the disease so in addition to this we have to really have a post uh, treatment protocol for them because uh, patients when they are leaving the hospital they have many doubts in their mind they want to know do's and don'ts and what what should be their physical activity whether the, what drugs they should take how long they should take to address this issue we are going to set up a cardiac rehabilitation center separately within the hospital premises great great uh, so that uh, i think that's uh, a great initiative yeah yeah so we want to establish uh, that one and uh, here itself uh, we have also got a very good food court because right. hygiene food uh, hygiene, hygiene is extremely is important. important we are providing a hygienic food i think most of the government hospitals why people don't prefer is because of that yeah so i think jaydeva is one of the hospitals where you can find very very hygienic system in place correct and uh, of course uh, we need to have a very good team concept mm -hmm. that's what i have established a very good conducive working atmosphere and uh, my door and my office is open for everybody uh, even the poorest of the poor can walk into my room and uh, uh, i don't want any patient to go untreated for the want of money or the for the sake of uh, true, true, true. any other issues and uh, another important issue is I always value the suggestions of my colleagues okay. and there is no distance between me and uh, my other colleagues so that's how ultimately we need to build a excellent trust um, amongst your team very that true. goes long way in building this hospital and yes we have set up a system uh, today it can be emulated in other government institutions in other states also yes. because of this uh, volume come revenue model right. because you treat more patients at a low cost yes. still you end up making some break even right right and uh, don't you think every mp constituency should have a hospital like this i am uh, not talking only about uh, heart uh, related hospital generally well, a multi speciality hospital should be there of course now uh, almost every district has a medical college but uh, it has to be ma made more more efficient in terms yeah, of that, that's delivery. what i'm saying whatever model that you're talking about yeah. don't, don't you think that should be and uh, another important uh, see in government institution uh, yes there are most of the medical colleges today government medical are autonomous some delegation and decentralization of power is important Absolutely. see yes. unless you decentralize and delegate powers then you cannot deliver so very that is very very important very and uh, particularly in this sector life is more important than the file right that is very very important absolutely absolutely so you you've got a lot of awards you know you've got a state you've got padma shri is there any award that is really close to you or you treat all the same or is that something which really motivates you also yeah well anyway i think uh, this some of these awards are given for uh, recognition of your services right so okay definitely normally when we get uh, some high profile award we feel satisfied we feel happy and uh, also it motivates that you have to do something more for the society but uh, to me the best award is the uh, feedback from the patient uh, that uh, I, I, we received a very good treatment and uh, there was uh, no financial issue when we got admitted and uh, when we asked for a discount when poor people asked for a discount or when they are in need of a, a, a free treatment so whenever i see them uh, either whenever i come across them whenever i go for some meetings some public meetings or whenever uh, i see them either in the railway station or in airport when somebody comes and tells me 
you saved my mother or you saved my daughter you saved my son uh, that so, is an award for so you so that is the best award to Correct. me absolutely and another imp- uh, thing that really gives lot of satisfaction is we have been training a lot of cardiologists and they are spread all over india all over the world so whenever they come and meet me in some conferences or in some meetings sir i, I was your student and uh, I, i think we learnt a lot from you and so i i, I think those are the most satisfying awards even uh, the last president of us mr yeah. barack obama also has appreciated the work yeah. of yours yeah yeah see uh, it happened uh, because of one incident one uh, an american citizen happens to visit jaydeva in the middle of the night okay so he had some chest pain so in the middle of the night he has landed in uh, our casualty so then uh, they have done an ecg they have done an echo some blood test and all and the bill given to him was 92 rupees okay so that uh, american citizen was amazed and puzzled see i got all this test done just for 92 rupees and also an expert uh, cardiologist also uh, cons- uh, advised me uh, this sort of thing never exist in united states then he wrote a letter to obama look uh, i got a this sort of treatment in a public hospital like jaydeva hospital america is also a democratic nation india is also a democratic nation uh, why this sort of a system is not existing in america to get all these things done it would have costed me uh, 5 to 10000 dollars here right. i got it for just 92 rupees it's unbelievable not only i was looked after well when i visited uh, jaydeva casualty even poor people uh, around me were also given the equal uh, importance and treatment so why can't we uh, develop this sort of system then uh, barack obama wrote responded to this uh, american citizens uh, letter telling that i fully agree with your sentiments and your suggestions when my mother was admitted in uh, united states for uh, treatment uh, at that time i was not a president i was moving with insurance papers from hospital to hospital definitely we will take it forward and try to incorporate some uh, uh, s- uh, treatment methodology for uninsured people in united states so probably that was incorporated in american health budget at that time and so somewhere in the remote corner jaydeva as Uh, played some small role <laughs> in mo- motivating american health policy right. so the, the something we came to know that you know something that us doesn't have and we have mm. so you know generally people try comparing correct. Correct. you know what we don't have and what correct. they have correct. so correct. you know so it's, it's really a proud moment sir and lastly do you have any message for the viewers that you want to give anyway uh, most important is uh, to keep a healthy heart they have to keep at least five things as low as possible uh, we say lower is better you can even call it as five point formula for a better uh, and a healthy heart see these five things has to be kept as low as possible number one is blood pressure second is blood sugar third is blood cholesterol fourth is body weight and waist circumference and fifth one is very important over ambition so keep all these things as low as possible and uh, physical activity is very very important and at least try to walk exercise at least 20 to 30 minutes a day uh, is uh, definitely improves your health and uh, if somebody is having high blood pressure and diabetes they have to be optimally uh, managed and uh, manage stress also very important the only way you can manage stress is you have to share your work and uh, de- you have to delegate your work and you should uh, always have a positive outlook in life absolutely absolutely fantastic sir it's really been a pleasure there's a lot of information that our viewers definitely have got and uh, we are very proud that you know we have our face of bangalore dr c and manjunath with us and thank you so much so thank you so much for your time it's really really been a pleasure having you on the show all right nice sir thank you so much sir thank you, thank you.